All right, so now we're going to talk about the second type of calculations that we have in Tableau, the aggregate calculations, and I split the functions into two groups. The first group going to aggregate the measures in our data source. So we have the sum, average count, and so on. And the second group where we can aggregate the dimensions of our data source. And here we have only one function. We have the attribute. So now we're going to focus on the first group, how to aggregate the measures in Tableau. Alright, so the first question is, what are aggregate calculations in Tableau? If you use those calculations, you're going to aggregate the rows of the data source and put the result at the visualizations level of the details. So that means the dimension that you are using in the view going to control the granularity of the measure. Let's have a quick example in order to understand it. So let's say that we have the orders table inside our data source and we would like to find the total sales by the products. And in this example, the sales is a measure and the product is the dimension. So in order to find the total sales, we're going to use the function sum in Tableau. So it's going to look like this. We're going to use the sum of sales. And in the view, we're going to have one dimension, the product. It is the one going to control the level of details in the view. And then we have the result of the function sum. So we're going to put here the results of the aggregations. So now with this tab, we're going to go and group up the rows of the orders by the products. So as you can see, the first group is based on the product number one. Then we have the second group for the product number two, three, and four. So as you can see, the orders now is divided into groups. And at the visualization levels, we're going to have exactly only one row for each group. So that means for the product one, we're going to have only one row. And then Tableau going to go and summarize all the sales inside this group. So at the end, in the result, we can have the value of 40. So as you can see, the aggregate calculations is grouping up the rows from the data source and present it as one row at the output in the visualizations. Then Tableau gonna move to the next group for the pay two. We're gonna have only one row and the summarizations of the sales gonna be 50. And the same thing gonna happen for the product three. We're gonna have here two rows and the summarizations of that's gonna be 45. And as well for the P4, we have as well one row in the visualizations with only 15 as a total sales. So as you can see, the aggregate calculation is going to go and group up the rows of the data source and present it as one value in the visualizations and the level of detail is going to depend on the dimension that is used in the view. That's why we say that aggregate calculations are going to bring the data at the visualization level of details. And it's not like the functions in the row level calculations where we have computed each value on the same row. So we didn't group anything. The number of rows is going to stay exactly like before. So this is how the aggregate calculations works and we don't have only one function we have here multiple functions so the first one we have the sum that we just learned it can return the total sum of all values within a field and then we have another one the average it can return the average of all values then we have the count it's going to count the number of values within a field then we have another very similar function called count d this time we're going to count the number of unique rows within a field then we have the max and min it can return the maximum value or the minimum value within the field. And now if you check the syntax of those aggregate functions, it's going to be the easiest if you compare it to any other functions. They all follow the same pattern. So they always start with the name of the function, for example, the sum, average, count, and so on. And they all accept only one field. So as you can see, we have the sum of sales, average of sales, and so on. So we have only one argument and it's very simple. So now let's go in Tableau and start practicing those aggregate functions. Okay, so back to our small data source, let's go to the product and as usual, we're going to get the category and as well the product name. So now those two dimensions are going to define the level of details and the product name going to be the one that is controlling. So here we have the five products inside our data source. And now in order to create aggregated calculations in Tableau, there are two ways. Either you're going to do it locally directly only for this view or globally by creating a new calculated field and it's going to be available for all other worksheets. So now let's go and check the first methods where we're going to go and create a quick aggregated calculation. So we're going to go to the orders and we're going to take the sales. So just drag and drop it here on the view. And now, as you might already notice that Tableau always try to aggregate the data at the visualizations. And for that, Tableau going to use the aggregated functions. So as you can see, we have the sales, but before it, we have the sum of sales. So that means Tableau is using the function sum in order to aggregate the data in the view. And this is the default method from Tableau to aggregate the data. 
So that means in Tableau that default type of calculations that can be used on the measure is the aggregate calculations and the default function that's going to be always be used is the sum. And now in order to change the function that is used in the aggregations, we can go to the measure over here, right click on it. And here we see that our field is a measure and using the sum function. In order to change that, let's go to the measure and we can find here a list of all different aggregate functions that we have in Tableau. So we have the sum, the average, the count, count distinct minimum maximum and so on so now for example we can go over here and change it to the average so now instead of sum of sales we have average of sales and at the output we're going to get the averages so as you can see it's very simple with just one click we change the aggregations function and as well it doesn't need a lot of configurations like we're going to see later in the table calculations for example or the lod expressions so this one is really easy if you want to change the function just go to the measure right click on it and then here you have a list of all functions that you can configure and of course, anything that I'm choosing now from those functions will not affect any other sheets and will not affect our data source. So here we still have the sales. We don't have here any field called the average sales. So it's going to be only locally available for this visualization. And that brings us to the second method where we can create an aggregated function that is globally available for all other worksheets or workbook connected to the data source. All right, so now let's say that I would like to have an extra field inside my data source to find the total of sales. In order to do that, we're going to go and create a new calculated field. It's really simple. We're going to call it total sales. And then in order to see the aggregate functions in Tableau, we can check the documentations over here. So let's go to all and then let's choose aggregate. And with that, you can find all the aggregate functions in Tableau. Inside it, you can find as well the LOD expressions. So we have here the fix, include and so on. So in order to find the total sales, we're going to have the function sum. And as you can see, it needs one expression. It's going to be the sales. So it's going to be only one field. So we're going to have the sales and that's it. So as you can see, the calculation is valid. And let's go and hit OK. And with that, we got a new continuous measure inside our data source. But here, the difference between aggregate calculations and the row level calculations is that those calculations are going to happen on the fly, where the row level calculations are going to store the data inside the data source. So that means if you go and check the data source data, or if you view the data from here, you can see that we don't have any information about the total sales. So now if you browse the data, we don't have any extra field called total sales. So because those informations will not be pre-calculated from Tableau and stored inside the data source, it can happen on the fly as you bring the field to the visualization. So that means Tableau will not go immediately and execute the aggregate calculations as you are creating them and then put the result in the data source. Tableau will do it on the fly and that's because Tableau doesn't know the level of details that you need at the visualizations. As you know, the data source has the raw level of details. So that's why only one type of calculations, the raw level calculations, can be pre-executed and stored inside the data source, and the rest can stay on the fly. So that means our new calculated field using the aggregate functions will not store inside the data source any data. The data gonna be calculated once you drag and drop it inside the view. So it's gonna stay empty as long as you don't use it. So let's go and close this over here and let's drag and drop it to the view to check the results. And now in this view, we got the total sales by the products because the product name gonna control the level of details. Let's say that you would like to have the total sales by the category in this view, you have to remove the product name so in order to do that we're going to go and remove the product name from the view and with that we got the total sales for each category so that means the aggregate calculations or the granularity of the measures going to depend on the level of details of the visualizations the dimension going to control everything going to control the level of details that we see in the view so now let's go and understand how tableau brought those numbers to the view okay so in the data source we have 15 orders and in the visualizations we said okay we would like to have that category so tableau gonna go and get the category to the visualizations and inside there there are like two values so we're gonna get the accessories and the monitor so we're gonna have with that only two rows then we're gonna have the sales the total sales so tableau gonna go and aggregate the sales for each category so as you can see tableau gonna go and split the orders into two groups the one with the category accessories and the other one with the monitor now in order to find the total sales of the accessories tableau gonna go simply and go aggregate all those values of the sales and put the result at the output so the first one gonna have like around 2377 
And for the next group, Tableau gonna do the same. So we're gonna go for all those orders underneath the category monitor and go and aggregate all those values. So with that, we're gonna get around 4,129. So as you can see, Tableau gonna go and split the rows by the dimension that is used in the visualizations. And in this example, it's gonna be by the category. So it's gonna split it into two groups and then gonna go and apply the aggregate functions. Okay, so let's move to the next one. We would like to find the average sales for each category. In order to do that, we're gonna go and create a new calculated fields and we're gonna call it average sales. And the function is very simple. So it is the AVG, the average, and then we can have our field sales and that's it. It's pretty simple. So let's go and hit OK. And as usual, we're gonna get a new empty field inside the data source. But once we drag and drop it on the view, the calculation is gonna happen. So let's do that. So with that, we can find the average sales for each category. And how Tableau did the calculations is very simple. Tableau gonna split again the rows inside the orders into two groups. The first group for the accessories. So it's gonna go and add up all those values inside the sales. And then it's gonna divide it by the total number of orders inside this category. So here we have around eight orders. So their final value gonna be around 297. The same thing gonna happen for the second group. So Tableau gonna go and add up all those values, then divide it by sevens because we have only seven orders for the monitor and we will get 590 as a result. So here we can see again that the dimension category is deciding how the calculation gonna happen and as well how the data gonna be split up. So that's all for the average function. Let's move to the next one. We have the count. Let's say that we would like to find the number of orders for each category. In order to do that, we can go and create again new calculated field and we're going to call it number of orders. And the function is really simple. So we're going to use the counts and inside it, we need only one field. This time we're going to go and count the order IDs. So in order to do that, we can go and use the order ID and that's it. So we are counting how many orders IDs we have inside our data source. The calculation is valid. Let's go and hit OK. As usual, we're going to get a continuous measure in our data source. Let's go and drop it to the view and check the results. We can see that in the accessories, we got eight orders and on the monitor, we got seven orders. So now let's see how Tableau is doing that. It's very simple. Again, our data is split into two groups and Tableau gonna start simply counting the rows. So how many rows do we have inside the accessories? It's gonna be eight rows. So we have here eight orders and if you count the rows of the monitor you will get as well seven orders. So with the count function we are just simply counting the rows. So that means in the accessories we got eight rows and on the monitor we got seven orders. There is one more special thing about the count. Let's say that inside our data we got nulls. Let's say that we don't have here any order ID. It's empty. It's null. So what's going to happen here? Tableau will not count it. So in this example, Tableau is going to go and count only six. So here instead of seven, we're going to get six. And this as well going to affect the previous function, the average. As we learned before, it's going to go and add up all those values. And then it's going to divide it by the number of orders. So let's say that we have here a null. This time, Tableau will not divide it by seven. Tableau is going to go and divide it by six. And here again, a reminder that we have to handle the nulls inside our data, as we learned before using the ZN or is null, if null, and so on. So if we divide it on six, it's going to be different than dividing it by seven, which is more correct. So here we have seven orders and not, not six orders. So that means pay attention if you feel that you are doing the aggregates on top of it, whether it has nulls or not, because having a null here, we're going to get inaccurate results. We don't have six orders, we have seven orders inside the monitor. All right, so that's all for this function, the count. All right, so now we're gonna move to a very similar function in Tableau called the count D. It's gonna return the number of unique or distinct values within a field. It sounds very similar to the counts, but here we have a difference between them where we are counting only the distinct values. Let's have an example in order to understand that difference. We would like now to show the number of products for each category. Let's go and create a new calculated field and let's call it number of products. And this time I'm going to start first with the function count to show you the differences between them. And we're going to use the field product ID. Let's go and select that and then hit OK. 
Again, we got a new calculated field. Let's show it at the results. And we can see that the results is very similar to the number of orders. So here again, we have eight products for the accessories and seven products for the monitor. So now what happened here? Well, if you check the data inside the order, we got only two products with the accessories and as well only two products for the monitor. So why we got eight and seven? And that's because Tableau gonna go and count the number of rows, whether it's like duplicates or not, it doesn't matter. So Tableau gonna go and count. Okay, here we have eight rows. So that means we have eight products. So that's why we cannot use the count function for this task. We have to use another thing where we're gonna use the count D. So let's go and change it. I'm gonna go to the calculated fields, edit, and just add a D after the count to use the next function. So we have count product ID. Let's go and hit OK. And as you can see in the result, now we got two for the accessories and two for the monitor. So let's see how Tableau gonna work here. Tableau gonna count the distinct or unique values within a field. So this time Tableau gonna pay attention to the content of the field. So it's gonna start counting. Okay, here we have uh, the USB mouse, so this is one. Then the next one, we have the same information, so Tableau will not count it at all. The same for the third. Then for the fourth order, we have a new product. So here we have a new value, the Logitech keyboard. So here we have two. Then move on to the same stuff. So here we have the same values. Tableau will not count them. So at the end, Tableau did count here two unique values. So here we have two products for the accessories. That's why Tableau can go on the output and put two for the next category. So we start with the same. So we have the LG full HD monitor. This is one product. The second one is the same value. So will not count it. Then move to the third one. As you can see, it's a new product, a new value. So it's going to count two and the rest will not count anything because it as well duplicates. So Tableau can go and count the number of unique values within a field. That's why we can have as well here a two, which is more accurate. We got only two products for the accessories and only two products for the monitor. So this is the difference between count and count D. Count will just blindly go and count how many rows do we have inside each category, but count D gonna go and check the content and it's gonna count only the unique and the distinct values. All right, so now we're going to move to the last two. We have the max and min. They are very simple functions in Tableau. The max is going to find the highest value within a field and the min is going to find the lowest value within a field. Let's go and check how it can work. So let's say that we would like to show the highest sales for each category. In order to do that, we're going to go and create a new calculated field. Let's call it highest sales. And then we can use the max function and we have the sales. It's very simple. It always needs one field. So that's it. Let's hit OK and let's check the results. Let's put it on the view. So here we can see the highest sales inside the accessories is the 525 and the highest sales for the monitor is the 1691. So let's see how this works. As usual, our data is split it into two groups. We start with the first group. So Tableau going to go and check all those values. What is the highest values? Inside those sales, it's going to be the 525. So Tableau going to present it as a result. Then we're going to move to the second group. So Tableau going to take all those values and compare it to each other's in order to find the highest value. And it's going to be this order number two as a highest sales inside our data for the category monitor. So that's it. This is how the max function work in Tableau. Let's go to the next one to find the lowest sales for each category. So we're going to do the same stuff. We're going to have new calculated field, lowest sales. And this time we're gonna use the function min and then our field sales. So that's it, click OK. And let's present it as a result as well to compare it. So we can find the lowest sales in the accessories is 56 and the lowest as well for the monitor is 40. So the same thing, Tableau gonna go and check all those values for the first group. What is the lowest sales? As you can see, it's gonna be this order, order number 10 going to be the lowest value and then Tableau is going to go and check those group of values in order to find the lowest value it's going to be this one the 39 Tableau is just rounding the numbers that's why we have here 40 but in reality it is um, 39.97 so that's it this is how the max and min works in tableau as you can see the aggregate functions in tableau are very simple those functions like i think this is my easiest tutorial that i made 
in the Tableau series. All right, guys, so that's all for these six functions in order to aggregate the measures of our data source. Next, we're going to talk about how to aggregate the dimensions using the very confusing function, the attribute. And if you like my content and you want to support the channel, then I really appreciate it if you support, like, and comment. This is really going to help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.